Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Um, first thing, always have to say this. If you hadn't, haven't subscribed, please do. And when you do, please push on the little uh, notification bell. If you click on that, then you'll be notified every time we put a new video up onto our YouTube channel. Uh, also, if you like us, be sure and click little likes and things because that's very good for us. Thank you very much. Okay, that takes care of the business. In our last video, uh, we built a Kickstarter for the, the uh, project bike, the Flathead 80, and I decided that it really wasn't done done enough. In other words, okay, so you've got it, now you can assemble it, yada, yada, yada. I try to show things with a semblance of order that makes it so that you can get a visual on how these things go together. Now basically we know how the, how the uh, Kickstarter works, we know how it goes together, but you don't put it all together to put the transmission back in a rigid frame and that's what I'm going to show now. Because the bike is still in mock-up stage, I did do one goofball error and I'll tell you when I get to it. Um, because the bike is in mock-up stage, it really makes it easier to demonstrate this stuff. I mean, I don't worry, have to worry about putting a scratch in the frame or uh, anything about handling it, so we can do this rather quickly. So here is the transmission, and I've got all the hardware on it now, um, the adjuster, everything to the plate. This is the best way to, to install a transmission, is on its mounting plate. Now, it's all loose on its mounting plate, but it's there. It's on its mounting plate. Now, I'm going to get this kickstand out of the way. Jiffy stand. Okay, now we're going to set this right here. And if this bike were all painted and done, I would be setting rags down so that I could set the transmission. Now I'm going to reach over and I'm getting the transmission from the other side and I'm going to slide it right into place right over the mounting holes for the transmission plate. If that looked easy it's because it was. It wasn't hard at all. By installing it with its plate it goes right into place. We didn't have to remove the oil tank. It's just, it's amazing. And I remember learning to do this and trying to do it so many ways. And this is the easiest way. Now I'm going to get these bolts in here, the mounting bolts. So there's the, the left front. And we'll get the right front one in there in a second. I can see that I'm not real crazy about one of the washers I picked for that. But that's okay. Like I said, this is still just mock-up stage. So let me put the... Well, I can put the nuts and washers on them, or I can do the rear ones first. Let's do that. You know, people say you do this so quickly. Well, once you get it in the right order, and actually I do it quicker, more quickly, on the YouTube channel, because I'm trying to, to get it done in a short amount of time so that people don't get too bored in the middle of a video. Okay, that one will tighten down from the other side. I'm actually not going to tighten them real tight. But by putting everything back on, I have all my hardware sorted out. Well, that's not right. I'll probably get longer bolts here for the front. So I can get lock washers on them. I like flat washers and lock washers, per preferably. Okay, there's that one. 
And we'll get the other one on the other side. So I think I'm going to go around to the other side now. Make sure these are uh, tightening down. Yeah, let's take that around to the other side. And I think, let's see. Yeah, we'll get that on there. Bolts on this side. Yeah, I just, it, I actually had a short bolt over there. It was kind of interesting. I will go back and change that because when we do our final assembly, we'll do a tear down first. And we're going to want to uh, put it all together for the last time. Looks like I picked up a 5 ace rather than a 9 16 I call that noise. Well, we don't need to tighten it down completely, but that'll pretty well do it for now. And same thing with the, the rear ones here. Now we have all four of them into the mounting plate. We always want to remember that out on this end is the fifth bolt. And all of the nuts and studs that are on the bottom of the transmission that go through the mounting plate are loose until everything is in place. Right now I'm putting that fifth bolt in. And this is one of those things that you do by braille. All right. So all the bolts are in. Yes, they're nice and loose. And the transmissions can slide fore and aft, but one of the things that I neglected to do, that's just the breather hose there, uh, on the last installation was I didn't mount the adjusting stud, the adjusting bolt. Okay, Mike, can you get in there? I'd like to show that. Let me get my big head out of the way. This bolt right here, as you tighten it with the transmission loose on its mounting plate, mounting plate tight, transmission loose on it, as you tighten this bolt, what it does is it slides the transmission back. Now, if I, you can probably barely see it moving, but as I tighten it, the whole transmission is sliding back. That's how you tighten your primary, or adjust your primary. We will be putting a belt drive on this. It will be enclosed, but we will have a belt drive. Okay, that all being said, we can now install the Kickstarter. So, let's do that. Let's see, first thing is put the gasket in place. The gasket is in place. And no, I don't normally put sealant on these, they don't leak. Not from around here. I mean, you've got nine studs and a machine flat surface, a thick gasket, and another machine flat surface. Okay. Next thing is the clutch push rod. It goes right through the main shaft of the transmission. 
And then we have the throwout bearing. We'll put that on there. We've got all the nuts and washers ready to go here. Whoa! Didn't mean to do that, but I will get it later. Anyway, one of the things I wanted to say is in finding nuts and washers for this, they're 5 sixteenths fine nuts I got at the local hardware store. And I got washers, they didn't have 5 sixteenths SAEs. So I just looked through the stuff and I found they had metric chrome washers. These are 8 millimeter, which is the same as 5 sixteenths, and they're a nice, small OD washer. Not quite the same as an AN washer. They're a little bigger, and they fit real well on these kicker covers. So anyway, what I'm going to do is put this thing on now. So here is the Kickstarter. And lock tabs are all done. Nuts are all tightened. And what we're going to do is this thing has been clocked properly so that we turn it like that. Now I'm going to let my gut hold it in place so that this pin will end up on this stop right here inside the case. So first, we get the throwout bearing arm out of the way. We get that little bearing in there. And then we get the whole thing lined up and push it into place. The sort of thing where you should have three or four hands, and most of us only have two. So we will put a couple of nuts and washers on here. And that'll hold it in place. So we can try it out and watch the watch the starter function. Okay. Now with two of them on there, it's fine. Yeah, it looks like we hung it up somehow. Well, we'll take it off and find out why. Having a little problem here, I don't have a half inch wrench. And I don't know. Ah, you're going to have to excuse me while I get one. I probably got that pin on the kicker gear hung up somewhere. And we're going to find out where. I don't see anything wrong. Unless somehow I just had it wound up with the uh, throw out bearing. Well, we'll try it again. Put that push rod in the shaft. Now that looks proper. Now 
And we'll get this one over here. And we'll give it a try. See how it works. Now, two of them is good enough for our purpose. We're not turning a, an engine over. But there it is, and it's working. Yeah, it's something's hanging that up. I think what we're going to do is put the arm on this. Uh, Let's put the arm on the, uh, or put the clutch arm on it. And we did that. Now, I was going to mention one of the screwy things I forgot to do was when Harley made these parts, and they were dealing with a clutch arm just like this one. And they made the battery tray, which is what's on the bottom here underneath the oil tank. At the factory, I mentioned this in another video, but somebody on the assembly line had to put that bend in every one of the battery trays. And it's always hard for me to make myself do it because when I buy a new battery tray, the last thing I want to do is take a hammer to it. And they're usually chrome. So here's a chrome one. And it's hitting the battery tray right here. So the arm cannot go back quite as far as we'd like it to. So when I disassemble this, I will take that battery tray out and hit it with a large hammer and it will be fine. So here we are. The transmission is in. The Kickstarter is on it. Uh, to really see that Kickstarter function, we're going to have to hook something up to it. But it's absolutely working now that everything is, is assembled and in the proper order. So we're okay with that. Everything is fine. Um, the only other things I wanted to mention was I've been playing around with handlebars on this thing. Remember, this is going to be an early style bobber. And as early style bobbers go, this is the handlebar that was used on early style bobbers. That's a Flanders number one. Um, Flanders is the oldest, from what I understand, the oldest handlebar manufacturer in the world. My dad used to buy all their scrap metal in the 1930s. So I guess they've been around a while. Anyway, that's it for now. I also got this crown nut, this nice new crown nut to go on the trees here. I'm not quite done with everything I'm doing there. There's going to be a little more finessing with a few things, but uh, that's a really, I think that's a really pretty part and I'm real happy with it. So that concludes our uh, video for this evening. And I don't know what we're going to do next. We'll do something next. And until then, see you out on the road.